Hi everybody, I'm Patrick Dockery. In my life, I have worn many hats and tasted many flavors. As I travel the world, I get to know today's most interesting celebrities, cook and dine with some of the finest chefs of our time, and experience the latest trends in beauty and fashion. Along the way, I pursued my passion for health and fitness and acquired some of the most innovative wellness strategies. And now, I want to share all of this with you. So come along on this amazing journey, and together, we will experience a world of health, beauty, and life. On today's show, we visit the home of Eva LaRue to talk about her Emmy-nominated performance on All My Children, her long-running role on CSI Miami, and what she's up to now. Then we stop in with Kathy Ireland's design brand ambassador, Nicholas Walker, to learn about his efforts to create a fully sustainable California home. And we go all the way to New Orleans, Louisiana, to learn how to create some delicious Southern-style dishes at Dickie Brennan's Palace Cafe. So now, let's check in with Eva LaRue. Everybody. Today we're here with the lovely and talented Eve LaRue in her home. Thank you for having us in your home. Thank you for coming over. How did you decide to get into the entertainment business? I, uh, I don't think I really decided. I was about seven when I got into the entertainment business and my mom, I had done like a little, uh, a little beauty pageant when I was about six and I booked my first commercial when I was seven. So did you like it right off the bat? You know, you were, you were only seven. I mean, yeah, I loved it. I, I knew I was the one that at three and four was always trying to put on a show with all my little friends in the neighborhood. And Well, and I know that carried on in your career because you've done a lot of different things in your career. I think the highlights of my career, probably all my children, yeah, which I, I loved. And that yeah. was the first time I ever lived out of state. Uh, obviously, CSI Miami sure. is another big highlight. But you know, um, what one of the, what the one of the more fun things that I ever did before either of those was uh, the new candid camera with Dom DeLuise. Yeah, I and I that was show. a host. I, I didn't yeah. really. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. It was really fun before America's Funniest Home Videos. Before, 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 before. Now you know working on soap operas is kind of challenging because you have a new script every day. Yeah. How was that to do? It's great because you get a chance to really sink yourself your teeth into. Um, a large quantity of work and it's all emotional work so it's kind of what you get into the business to do when you're first starting in the business it's a fantastic training ground now that I haven't been doing it for so long I have to say you miss that big emotional character arc you miss that big emotional arc that you get to take and flesh out every day so what's on the agenda for you now what are you working on um, I just wrapped a Christmas movie called Help for the Holidays that was really, really fun to do. And that's going to be airing on Hallmark Channel in December. So. They do some good, I know the Hallmark shows are, are really nice. I, lo yeah, I love those. Yeah, and the Christmas ones are fun because oh, yeah. I've got a 10-year-old daughter and oh, yeah. we're all about the Christmas movies. Hi, welcome to Holly Days. Can I help you? You're Sarah Van Camp. Yes, I am. I'm Christine Prancer. We have an appointment. Prancer? Really? Well, you were recently up in Canada on a shopping network. Yes. And uh, That's right, I, guess, I guess that was kind of fun, huh? It was. It was really fun. That was the first place I launched was the uh, shopping channel in Canada. When I was starting to put together my sketches and I was starting to design about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, um, there were so many things that I loved. I you know, loved really high-end things. I loved um, really funky fashion forward things. I loved rocker style things. I loved all these different styles. Child of the 80s. What am I going to do? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I thought, well, what am I, how am I going to hone this sure. collection to be, what is it that means the most to me? Because it's the pieces that say something to me or mean something to me. So one of the, one of the main parts of the line that I designed was based on my daughter because when she was little and my husband and I uh, first got divorced and she was going to be first going to her dad's house on the weekends, which is a really rough time because it's usually the first time you're ever yeah. going to be apart from your Absolutely. kids as a mom. My aunt, Lori, gave me this, gave my daughter and I both these matching necklaces. There were these cheesy little cheap crystal necklaces. It was a little moon and a little star attached to it dangling from the moon. And she said, now, no matter what, because moons and stars are always together, and they're never separated and you're always wherever you both are in the world you're always looking up at the same moon so you're never far apart and so you should always wear your necklaces when you are apart so we did and I ended up now 10 years later 
I thought, I have to design jewelry around that concept. That's right. Speaking of inspiration and things from the heart, you are doing some really good work with the Beck Strand Foundation. It does something very unique that I think a lot of cancer organizations don't do. This takes care of the daily, day-to-day -day needs of somebody who's struggling for their life. If you are the, if you're single, and even if you have medical insurance, you have to quit your job, or you have to, you can't work for the six months you're going through chemo and yeah. and radiation. Absolutely. Who's paying your rent? Right. Who's paying for your gas? Who's getting you to and from the hospital? Right. There's just no money. So Beckstrand comes in and pays for all of that during treatment. Whatever way you may need help, they're there to help you. I'm glad you're doing this great work and uh, you know, best of luck to you. It's just it's just amazing. And I, I love when people that have the celebrity and have, you know, all the notoriety get behind things like this and it really makes a difference in our world. I feel like if you don't put money in your karma bank, when it comes time to withdraw, which we all have to at some point in our life there won't be any thanks for spending time with us thank you thank your, you so much for in coming your, over. in your gorgeous home and uh thanks for uh doing all the good work you're doing because it's amazing not only with your jewelry with the beckstrand foundation and just generally being a great person with a great vibe i mean thank i appreciate that so thank much thank you i appreciate that you're, you're wonderful <laughs> and thank you everyone for being with us and until next time just remember to enjoy, enjoy. we'll be right back to visit nicholas walker at his spectacular california rant Welcome back. Let's check in with Nicholas Walker. Nicholas Walker is a world-renowned designer who brings authenticity and integrity to all of his creations. As a design ambassador for Kathy Ireland, Nicholas finds inspiration throughout his property through the beauty, color, and textures of all the natural landscape. And as we join him in the hills of Malibu, we can see why. Hello, everybody. Today we're here with Nicholas Walker in his lovely, lovely five acre Topanga retreat. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So, what do you got going on here? Well, um, I think the best word is a lab. It's a lab for Kathy Ireland. And so, this is basically our outdoor lab, and it's bringing the outdoors in. Underneath here is a technique that we use in Europe but it's using fruitless mulberries. So fruitless is that they'll grow, they're deciduous, but in about two years time, the branches will grow into each other. Then I'll be able to graft them together. In five years, we'll have a live arbor of fruitless wow. mulberry trees. Take away the outside stakes and you've got a, a you structure, got, a, a living structure. structure. A living structure. Love it. Yeah. What drives my design is that we have to design to site conditions. And if we don't honor mother nature, she's always going to win. Oh, she'll win. So why not align yourself? She becomes your mentor and design accordingly. If you have a water-wise garden, you also very quickly have a fire-wise garden. And if a fire does come through here, the last fire that came through here was 93, you will be able to replenish it. So I am on a slope and what I've done and you'll see on the property is terracing. And you'll say, well, why are these artificial terraces? Because it slows down the erosion. Absolutely. It keeps the water on site and then we control it. And what you want is the water, the natural rainfall water to percolate and be kept on site. Nick conserves water by keeping natural waterways unobstructed and taking advantage of his sloping site. Strategically placed water collection basins collect rain and runoff to prevent erosion and to provide irrigation for a myriad of plants. Nicholas even recycles the water he uses from his house. Well, this is, this is what I love. This, is, this comes from my bath water. So if you take an Epsom salt bath, ammonium yeah. sulfate, yeah. best kind of fertilizer. Yeah. So instead of putting it down the sewer, put it in your garden. So the pinkish, uh, tube here shows everybody that this is non-potable. Um, do not drink. Do not drink. Okay. But you can use this water to feed these plants. Feed the plants. They're getting and nutrients water and water. So what I feel really proud about is that there is no waste of prop there's no waste of water on this property. And all the water from our showers, from our baths, we have four kids, so a lot sure. of baths. We use phosphate-free detergents. Yeah. That's the only caveat. The only thing that we cannot put into this system is meat, bacteria, so right. kitchen sink, all dishwasher. Right. But everything else, if you use phosphate-free soap and you use Epsom salt baths, there's no better water. In addition to recycled water, Nicholas is always looking for reusable materials. 
His repurposed wood for natural seating areas, reused concrete slabs whenever possible, and he recycled a neighbor's discarded driveway as a retaining wall and makes excellent use of natural fertilizers to feed and enrich the beautiful landscape and gardens. Now, this is where, you know, Kathy charges me to say, okay, bring me design elements. So here's a perfect example of something called agave parii. This basically, as a design inspiration, can be translated in so many products. But I'm the one who says, Kathy, look at this. She'll, she'll, she'll never see this. Right. But I bring it, she experiences it, and then now we're wrestling, is it top of bed? Is it to be translated into a curtain? Is it, is it a bowl? Exactly, right. a bowl. So many things. Design inspirations can come from everywhere on Nicholas's property. And the interior of the home is full of ideas for green living. The home takes advantage of the latest in sustainable technology. The roof is coated with a reflective material that repels the sun's UV rays and features solar panels to convert sunlight to electricity, as well as hydrothermal technology to radiate warmth through the home from beneath the beautiful hickory floors. These pipes all come from the hydrothermal panels. Which is up on the roof. Which is on the roof, which the sun is heating coils of copper pipe, which then brings the heat into coils that is at the bottom of this cistern. And in here, we have water stored, heated only by the sun. And what's great here, because we were able to build it from ground up, we're using the sun to also heat our home. And we have PEX tubing, which is basically a combination of aluminum and PVC melded together in tubing that is put into the floor and we have radiant floor heating. So the sun is heating the water, stored in this tank, goes through these tubes all in the floors, and there's nothing better than stepping on a warm floor as your heat source. There's no blowing, there's no dust, very efficient. Well, now we're in your actual household. Yes. We saw the underneath, Welcome. we saw the outside, mm -hmm. we saw the roof, we've seen everything. And then we also have, everything's LED in here, is that correct? Every light is LED, so it lasts 20, 25, 30 years. Wow. So you're pretty happy with it? I'm thrilled. But if you do a true cost analysis. Over 25 years. Over 10 years, years, 25 years, you're way ahead of the So year. when will you break it even, do you think, with, with what your calculations were? I think eight years. Eight years, not bad. Mm -hmm. We're back out on the patio. Yep. I wanted to talk about the unique design of the walls here, because they're real thick. This is a stucco finish called Omega Flex. We have one inch of stucco. Okay. Then we have sheer wall. Then we have about four inches of airspace that is filled in with expanding foam insulation. Then we have another sheer wall mm -hmm. of plywood, three quarter inch. And then we have five eighths uh, drywall. Awesome. Wow, this house is well designed. Thank you. From the ground up. <laughs> we love it. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this is a beautiful place. I'm not, you know you don't get tired of this view. It's so gorgeous. I don't, and uh, you're, you're welcome here anytime. Great. It was a pleasure to have all of you here. And we've loved, uh, absolutely loved what you've done with your property. Thank you. And I know it's, a, it's an ongoing project, so it just doesn't it stop here. Come back in about five years, there'll be another leg. Hey, can't wait to see it. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for being with us, and until next time, just remember to enjoy. Coming up next, Southern Style Cooking in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now it's time for some Southern Cooking at Dickie Brennan's Palace Cafe. Dickie Brennan's Palace Cafe has been a staple in New Orleans since 1991, serving its own flavor of New Orleans. Located on historic Canal Street, they have been keeping the tradition of Creole cuisine alive. We were lucky enough to catch up with Chef Brandon Mutzel of the Palace Cafe, where he was already preparing an arugula salad made with a peppery green baby back arugula, jumbo lump crab meat, and fresh sliced red onions, tossed in a citrusy vinaigrette made with extra virgin olive oil and locally grown satsuma. After marinating the crab, add one to one and a half ounces of crab meat into the pit of the avocado. Garnish with some extra parsley and red pepper, and for color, add a couple of fresh slices of satsuma orange. This salad is beautiful to look at, but even better to taste. Well, that salad was amazing. 
Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it looks really great. And uh, now we have a nice piece of fish over here. What are we gonna do with this? This is yellowfin tuna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sear this in okay. what is known as Creole seasoning. Creole okay. seasoning is our local blend of spices that we okay. use. It is a secret as far as the quantity oh. goes, but we have salt, garlic, cayenne pepper, paprika, and onion all blended into there. So okay. that, that's the blend. And then we're gonna top it with lemon almond pesto, and we're gonna put that on top of a lemongrass quinoa salad. Ooh, that sounds really good. So first what we're gonna do, somewhat liber liberally season this tuna. You're gonna make sure you want a good coat on it. Okay. Uh, for health reasons, we always like to use a little bit of extra virgin olive sure, oil. And you got your pan hot already. Got my pan already started. So all I'm gonna do is, again, make sure you got a hot pan. Starting to smoke and, well, there it sears right up. Sear it on there. We're gonna leave it there for about 30 seconds okay. and then we're gonna flip it over. Okay. So until we flip it over, what we're gonna do is build our salad. Very good. So what we have here, list of ingredients, I'm gonna start with quinoa. Mm -hmm. You cook this somewhat like you do rice. Um, in this particular application, it's already been cooked. We use lemongrass to give it a nice lemony, sure. sort of a citrusy flavor to Very it. Good. I'm gonna put this in a bowl and we're gonna toss it with our salad. And then next that's gonna go in this, we're gonna use just a little bit of chopped up red onion. Give this guy a lip. And they said men couldn't multitask. Look at this guy, you're doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty talented. Oh yeah, I can uh, tell. Baby arugula, again, um, with our last dish we did this. It's a peppery green. Yeah. It's gonna help flavor this dish. Uh, cherry tomatoes, sure. grape tomatoes. All I've done is just slice these in half here. Okay. Um, add these to the salad. Adds color and texture. I'm Looking gonna flip good. this tuna one more time. Look at you go. Nice. And I'm gonna turn it off. By the time we get back to it, it'll be ready to go. A little salt and pepper. And you're using uh, culture salt, basically? Or? I, yeah, so we use okay. culture salt here. Great. All right, so this is pretty much our salad. And we're simply going to put this on the base of the plate. OK. I think it looks pretty. I like the look. All right, so since our tuna is done, yeah. again, it's OK if it's raw on some sides. You just really want a good sear on it, okay? And it smells great. That uh, the Cajun spice, Cajun. or it's a little, it's a little spice in there. So okay. you get a lot of round flavors in it. Round. Put that right on top of your salad, like that. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. And then what you're gonna come back with here is I've got what's called a lemon almond pesto. We've used almonds in this application, and as well as just some lemon juice to give it some sort of a lighter, nice flavor. So almost like your traditional, however you you substitute out the pine nuts and put a little lemon in. Correct, That's absolutely. Nice. And then we're gonna just garnish some with some almonds. slivered baked toasted almonds. Now this is gorgeous. So did that take us like what, four or five minutes? Four or five minutes, yep. Right on, well this is beautiful. I can't wait to, you know, for your guests to eat this. It looks so gorgeous. All right, well thank you so much. All right. Appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for uh, having us in and thanks for these uh, amazing dishes. You're welcome, hope you enjoy them at home. And thanks for being here with us as well. And until next time, just remember to Enjoy. We'll be right back with more great food from the Big Easy. Welcome back to the Palace Cafe. Now let's enjoy their world famous Bananas Foster. Well, today we're here in New Orleans and we're on Canal Street at the world famous Dickie Brennan's Palace Cafe. And we're here with Dante Kinchin. Yes, sir. And you're here to show us about uh, the history and the way to do the, the Bananas, Bananas Foster, exactly. which was actually developed here, in, here New in New Orleans. Yes, it was. All right, let's uh, see what we got here. Not a problem. So we're gonna start off with a nice cooking pan here. All right, you start off with about two tablespoons of butter, three-fourths cup of brown sugar. You got your handy-dandy table, which not everybody yeah. has at home. Yes, but, you know. yes, so please, if you try this at home, be careful. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're gonna start off with a little butter and brown sugar. Use the butter to coat the pan so I don't burn myself or anyone else. Okay. All right. That wouldn't be a good idea. Ah, right, just depending. <laughs> so now how long have you been working here? Uh, I've been working at Palace for almost four years now. Uh, started off from the bottom, now I'm working my way to the top, so very exciting. Um, and I've learned a lot of history about everything. Uh, just to give you the history of the Bananas Foster, uh, the Bananas Foster was created on Royal Street at the original Brennan's. Okay. Uh, what we had was an abundance of bananas at the port, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to figure out something we can do with these bananas. We had a lawyer, Mr. Richard Foster, that Now what's that in. you're putting in? Oh, this is a little banana liqueur, which banana is simple liqueur. syrup okay. and banana extract. 
Um, Mr. Foster came in every day, uh, bringing new clients in, getting lunch. So we wanted to do something to, you know, make him feel special for coming in every day. We started what we called the Bananas Flambe. Uh, Mr. Foster died uh, about a year later, and in a memory of Mr. Foster, we changed from Bananas Flambe to Bananas Flambe. Okay, so that's how it got its name. That's how it's got its Wonderful. name. Always keep it stirring, because uh, what happens is it'll eventually stick to the pan. Okay. Uh, it's all about how hot you get your pan to what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna add in my bananas here. We use one banana cut into four slices so it can cook evenly on each side. The last thing you want you to do is to, uh, let your bananas get mushy. Okay. Uh, so what we do is quick turn on your bananas. Your sauce should be getting real hot. already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what I do is, which is a little bit different than everyone else, is I always put my bananas away from the front. I let my sauce continually cook, but I want my bananas to be a little firm. Okay. So I bring them off the fire and just cook the sauce itself. Mm. All right. We learned a special trick right here. Yes, you? yes. Um, once your sauce looks like it's getting to the point where it's about to caramelize, you want to go ahead Make sure you have your dark rum handy. Okay. And also, our cinnamon here. The reason it's called Bananas Flambe and Bananas Foster is because you actually want to catch the bananas on fire. So you do work your bananas back into the front of the pan. Okay. All right. Always pull away from the fire. Whoa, nice. Cinnamon, being a tree bark, gives it a little spark. Nice effect, too. Of course, kids think it's magic, so I run with it. Oh, why not, right? Uh, this here is gonna be our vanilla bean ice cream. Okay. Our vanilla bean ice cream is made in-house, so if you ever come here, it is wonderful. You should try it. You make it look like, like it's uh, real easy, but I know you need to know what you're doing here, don't you? You do, you do, I You've promise. Done, how many of you have done of these? Oh, you gosh. Really? Hundreds, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that sauce looks so delicious. You always... It's a simple dish, but like I say, it takes a little skill to do it right. Yes, it does. Tante, this looks amazing. Thank you, thank now you. Now I get to taste it? Of course. Well, I already know I love this dish anyway. <laughs> get a little ice cream. Okay, here it goes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> thank you so much. Right? Sir. Yeah. What do people say? Dante's Inferno. That's right, huh? <laughs> you got it right, didn't you? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, thanks so more. much. It's delicious. Thank you. Delicious, thank you so much, Dante. Thank you. And thank you so much. And until next time, just remember to enjoy. enjoy. All right, thank you to all of our guests on this week's show. To Eva LaRue for inviting us into our beautiful home, to Nicholas Walker for sharing his Southern California Design Lab, and to Dickie Brennan's Palace Cafe for their culinary expertise. On next week's show, we will spend some time in the salon with Gretchen Rossi of Orange County Housewives. Whip up a tasty treat with dessert chef Chris Hamner. Then we'll be heading to San Antonio, Texas to spend a day in the Lone Star State. Until next time, just remember to enjoy.